remember when I was a kid, I, I did imagine myself on a stage playing music. I just had this picture of it. Always, it's a weird mix to kind of want to to want to make music and want to perform it, but at the same time, be not particularly naturally a, a kind of show off. I'm, I'm, I'm much, I'm not that happy when the spotlight is on me, really. But um, I just loved music, and I and I liked the the idea of performing it. Uh, you know, f ever since I can remember, it's just always been something I've always wanted to do. There's lines on your face. Guide me back to play. I started actually writing songs, trying to write songs. I mean, I think from you know, 11 or 12, and thinking about lyrics and how you could, um, how you might be able to get someone else to feel something with the words you were writing. Music always comes first for me, always. Um, lyrics come when they need to. Uh, it's funny, you can, you can write a million chord sequences and none of them are interesting, and then one day you, you, you just hit one and it's like a window opens and the words just flow in, you know. Um, and I don't care if they don't make sense at first, I really don't. Like the music I respond to is, I, I never respond to straight narratives, you know. If someone's just telling me a story, it's, I find it very dull. But I want a lot more than that, I want at depth and atmosphere uh, and ambiguity, because in those spaces it tells you something about the world and, and your world. They must never know They will never know Just how dark The night time gets Just how Place our bits. Writing songs in a way is, to me, is a beautiful way of, of trying to leave a legacy, you know. So I always, I, when, when I'm writing a song, I always try and think, okay, you know, these are your, this is your last will and testament here. This might be what people remember you for. This might be what your kids come and find when they want to remember what you were like or what you were thinking. And that drives me to, to try and, um, peel back layers until I get to some kind of truth about the way I the way I feel about the world. I cannot shout above a billion screaming voices. After the Outbursts album, after the last Tune Breaks album, I started to get, I suppose, what is referred to as writer's block, I think, for the first time ever. Or something had shifted in my head and I had lost it. I just couldn't do it anymore. It was really strange and I found myself trying to write songs rather than just doing, you know. And I'd never had that before. And I was really conscious while I was writing, I was, I was imagining, you know, what would the radio people say? Will they, you know, will anyone care about this? All this crap that, that I think had been f attacking me for, for a long time, you know, since, since we first became successful. 
and it was a worry and, you know, and, and it, it went on for a few years, you know. Um, and eventually I decided the only way I'm going to be able to write again is if I write for myself because that's the only thing I had left was putting myself on the line, you know, and challenging myself directly to do it and to, and to do it alone. Um, to try and to try and re-engage, to try and re-find that, that fire. Suddenly, the window opened and this, this stuff just flew in, you know. And I couldn't stop writing, I just couldn't stop. For a, I had this month of just intense writing. Every single night I'd have a new song. The way I decided to make this record was very uh, homemade because I, it had to be homemade because at the end of the day I have to take the kids to school and pick them up at three o'clock uh, and if I, if I went to a studio I wouldn't have been able to do that, I wouldn't have been able to function in my life. So it had to work for me so I decided okay no studio, it's got to be done at home and it's got to be done you know, around my life, and uh, and it's got to be an easy thing to do. Um, it wasn't easy. If not now, when I won't wait for an afterlife. If not now, when can I taste you upon the night? I'll rise if you take my hand You're sad and I understand How can you smile when you're so busy dying? Us rabbits on the run Must fend for everyone Our selfishness can be undone I know this It's easy to romanticize your past I only want to leave a thing that lasts Time will pass, surely will I was listening a lot to people like Elliot Smith and he, he made this record, one of my favourite sounding records ever made. It's very lo-fi, it's definitely not, um, it wouldn't have won production awards, but who cares about stuff like that? It, it's just got incredible soul because you can feel, somehow you can feel his intention because it's so close to him, the whole thing, it's not been filtered through incredibly high-end gear and loads of people and ironed out until there's nothing left, no personality. It's pure personality. Um, and I think that drove me to look at that kind of way of making a record, you know. I researched it a bit and kind of discovered this particular pocket of technology that just really appealed to me. And it was these um, half-inch eight tracks. So I, I went and found uh, this guy that was selling his his studio. I filled up my car with his gear, all this old stuff from the 80s, or the early, very early 80s, much to my wife's disgust because I filled up our house with crap. And it was really necessary uh, f for me to do it. That was part of it. I, I was on a journey, you know, and I had to, I had to fall in love with this machine and then I had to learn how to take care of it. I had to learn how to clean it and set it up and get it serviced and it, they're very temperamental things they're not like computers they you know if they're not happy they're not going to work for you reel to reels magnetic tape the way they sound 
you, you, you sound different, you sound like a new you, you know. Um, my guitars sounded different, they sounded like someone else, they sounded like a new version of me. And that, that man, that was so exciting. But of course me being me and the way I work, which is, you know, I kind of find ever new, increasing, amazing ways to completely torture myself. Um, I, I sat down and I'd done all this, I'd set up my gear and I had this vision and I sat down and I pressed record on the machine and the tape started to go round and it, the red light came on and I completely crapped myself and I, could, I couldn't play. Every time I pressed record on the machine, my heart would race and I would sweat and I would freak out and I'd get to the first verse or the first chorus of a song and I couldn't play, I literally couldn't play, shaking. I'd ha and I'd tear off half my clothes and storm out of the room and pace around the house like a lunatic, you know. Um, luck most of the time no one could see this, I'm glad to say. But I think my wife saw me a few times and probably thought I was um, having a, a turn. But she's used to that. Rachel, that's my wife, uh, was very, uh, very enthusiastic and supportive about it because she knew how, how what a worry it was for me when I when I'd panicked so much that I couldn't get to the chorus. She'd come in and punch me in for the chorus when I'd calmed down enough to get through it, uh, and then she'd sing harmonies when I asked her to, and she'd play piano because she can play piano unlike me, because she bothered learning. She got massively involved and. Um, it's great because she's always wanted to be involved and she finally got a chance. <laughs> I think the first song I recorded was a song called The Introvert. I'd written 10 songs and they were about me and about my family and about my life now. Uh, and they weren't trying to be anything else. They were seriously honest, really personal songs. And I was so pleased because they just had this atmosphere that I that I'd, I've wanted to get to. There's, everyone has those records in their life and not. I have some that that I love that are just just really have this original rare atmosphere to them um, and I wanted to do my version of it you know I felt like I could I could add something to that canon it might fail but I could try you know I felt like I had that in inside me I thought I was done uh, I thought it was finished and I and I had the mastering uh, session booked in with my guy that I like to use and um, and then I picked up my guitar the night before and I started to write a bloody song you know and it was almost annoying because I knew I knew straight away that it was uh, important and the structure was all there and it, I loved the chords and I loved the pace of it and I just knew it was really important and I knew it was the title track of the record straight away. I just thought, if not now, when? That is, that's the conclusion, that's the full stop, that's the surprise mark, you know, that's... And it had taken me, you know, I hadn't written a song for the record for two months, I thought I'd finished it, you know. Uh, and it had taken that long, I think, for the, for the end for the key track, the key moment to somehow bubble up. Um, but that's the great thing about being in control self. If, I, if it was a record label um, that I was that I was sort of working for in a way, I think it would, I wouldn't have been able to put that on the record. But because of the way I've done it, because I've done it at home and because it's all just me doing it, um, I, I recorded it. I turned on the machine, sat down, recorded it took it to the mastering the next day and it was part of the album and you know I couldn't I could never have done that before I'm slow in letting go white lies underneath will show in time the demons deep below will come here we hide in the underground dreamy world around our busy brains ignore the sound of crying it's easy to romanticize the past i 
I only want to leave a thing that lasts Time will pass, it surely will Your years underneath the sun Fresh face where lines will come The burning bodies of the young and fearless How long will it take to fall? How long before you hit the wall? I'd banish all from rise and fall if I could It's easy to romanticize your past I only want to leave a thing that lasts Time will pass Surely will If not now When I won't wait for an afterlife If not now When can I taste you There is, um, there is a worry that like You want, you, you might go back to something um, years later and wish you'd done it better, you know, technically at least. Um, but I also purposefully picked a technology that that is in some ways timeless because um, it's not it's not now. It's part of a classic sound. That sound of that analog tape. It's a, it sounds like a record. It sounds like the records of your youth. It kind of just does. It sounds like things you already um, know. So it's kind of timeless in a way. And um, I wanted it to have that sound. And it, and it does, you know, it does. I really like the way it sounds, actually. I'm really pleased with it. It, it has a real character. You know, it's not hi-fi, but it's not lo-fi. It's, it's just, it is what it is. It's me. It's the sound of me in a room. Um, done with a lot of warmth and uh, care and time and stuff that doesn't happen enough these days in this incredibly fast world that we live in. I only want to build a thing that lasts Time will pass, it surely will Spiderweb, butterflies, dangerous delights awaiting in the night. It gets dark, then light, peaks and troughs, sharps and softs, worker bees and boss collide tonight. In some colorful fight, the water is warm, so I'm told. 